First Samuel chapter 2 and verse 22. Anybody ready for a word of God? A word of God, a word from God, and a word for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. First Samuel chapter 2, beginning of verse 22. And now Eli, who was very old, look at somebody and just tell him he was older than you. Heard about everything his sons were doing to all Israel and how they slept with the women who served at the entrance to the tent of meeting. I am glad that is not my text this morning. So he said to them, why do you do such things? I hear from all the people about these wicked deeds of yours. No, my sons, it is not a good report that I hear spreading among the Lord's people. If a man sins against another man, God may mediate for him. But if a man sins against the Lord, who will intercede for him? His sons, however, did not listen to their father's rebuke, for it was the Lord's will to put them to death. And the boy Samuel continued to grow in stature and in favor with the Lord and with Men, God, we pray that you will set your blessing upon your word this morning by your spirit for your glory. We ask it in the name of Jesus. Everybody said amen and amen and amen. Turn to somebody just before you see it and just tell them there's another key to favor. You may be seated in the house of God. Last Sunday, uh, Pastor Santino preached a message kicking off this series that we are in now called Activating God's Favor. Maybe you didn't know you could activate God's favor, that God was there, resident, ready, prepared for you to activate it. We found out last week that faith activates favor. Say that with me. Faith activates favor. Why? Because it was the story of Noah, and Noah believed God even when it was ridiculous. It was silly to believe God at that point. God said, I'm going to send rain. Noah said, what's rain? There had never been one drop of rain, not one, before the flood. Everything was irrigated by the ground. Everything came out of springs and wells. There would never had been rain up until that moment that God sent rain to release the flood. And so Noah had to believe something he didn't even know existed. Anybody ever do that in your life? God says, believe this, and you're like, uh, I don't know what that is. And Noah believed God, and so Noah had faith in the word of God and in the command of God. And it says that Noah then found favor in the eyes of God. So we understand, first of all, that faith activates favor. Say that with me one more time. Faith activates favor. That's the first principle that we're learning in this series. I want to deal with the second key and a second principle to understand what unlocks or activates the favor of God. The story that we read this morning is very, very interesting. It takes place about 1170 years before Christ. About 1100, 1170 years before Christ, this incident takes place. When you begin to read the opening chapters of 1 Samuel, you begin to be aware of something that's very, very apparent and it glares at you in its understanding. And that is this, that the Israelites were both leaderless and they were disconnected from God. The time of the judges was over. Samuel is going to assume a place of leadership. He will be considered to be the last judge of Israel. But at this point in time, this is a a crisis moment. Israel doesn't have leadership. They're without any direction spiritually. And so they are absolutely bereft of and uh, deficient in having a leader that can guide them and take them into the will of God. They're disconnected from God. The closest thing they have to a national leader here is Eli. We find about how he's very old at this point. He was the priest who, with his sons, ran the temple and the shrine in Shiloh. There's a problem. Eli is a dysfunctional parent. He's a lax parent. He lets his kids get away with anything. Let's them run the church however he want, he, they want to run it. And they're running amok in the church. 
mucking up the place, doing everything we just read about. And I said, I'm glad that's not my text this morning. As a result, what happens? God is displeased with Eli. He's displeased with the sons. And he's displeased with what's going on in the church and within the temple and within the nation. And so it is clear here that he says, I'm going to put them to death. It's my will to put them to death. They are marked by divine disfavor. How many of you know there is a difference between disfavor and favor? Disfavor means you get nothing. Disfavor means you get the backside of favor. You get the wrong side. You get the negative side. They're marked by disfavor because they don't serve God faithfully and they don't serve God correctly. But in contrast, it's interesting because the verse kind of jumps up and it seems to be out of out of out of sync but really it's not because when it says at the end of verse 25 it it says his sons however did not listen to their father's rebuke for it was the lord's will to put them to death and the boy samuel uh, it was the lord's will to put those sons to death but there is a boy named samuel i thank god that there's always a samuel somewhere that god has and the boy Samuel continued to grow. He continued to grow in stature and in favor with the Lord and with men. So you have this distinction between the sons of Eli who are marked by divine disfavor. And then you have Samuel who's described as maturing, growing up in stature and in favor with God. There's a clear difference. There's a clear differentiation. There's a clear distinction between these two. I'm glad that God always has a way of discerning between the two. I'm glad that God knows the heart of people. I'm glad he understands that we don't always meet the requirement and we don't always meet the standard that maybe people think we should, but I, I came to understand uh, over the years serving God that God looks at the heart and not at the outside. Yes. That divine standards are inward, not outward. Yes. Anybody glad about that this morning, that divine standards are inward and they're not outward? And so it is then that there is this emphasis on Samuel and his continual growth. It says, look at it with me. It says, and the boy Samuel continued to grow in stature and in favor with the Lord and with men. Everybody say continued to grow. Continue. That is one phrase in the Hebrew and it literally means this. Watch this. It means that he devoted himself to the, the, the things of God. When it says he continued to grow, it means he grew in his devotion. He grew in his appreciation. He grew in his gratitude. He grew in his love for God. He grew in his love for the house of God and the things of God. You didn't have to tell Samuel to go to church. He knew when it was church time, he was going to be in the house. You didn't have to tell Samuel to tithe. You didn't have to tell Samuel to serve. You didn't have to tell him anything. He was understanding this from inception, from youth, the time that his mother brought him, Hannah, and dedicated him unto God. He began to serve at a very young age. My mother brought me to church when I was just a few weeks old. And those things stayed in me even though I went my own way. The Bible says, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's older, he will not depart from it. Don't neglect bringing your children to church. Don't neglect having your children in the house of God. And so it is that Samuel then has this sense of love and devotion to the things of God and to the house of God. And there is this emphasis then on his continual growth in what? In divine favor. It says that he grew in stature. That means literally that, that he had influence. Doesn't mean he was a big guy. It means he had influence. Had nothing to do with his physical prowess. Has everything to do with his influence. He grew in stature. People recognized him. 
People understood that there was something different about him. People understood that there was a distinction that he had been allowed and enabled to make by the Spirit of God in and on his life as God even called him from his childhood as he heard the voice of God as a little boy. And he said, is that you, Eli? And Eli said, I didn't call you. Go back to bed. And God calls him three different times. And Eli tells him, the next time that God calls you, just say, here am I, Lord. Your servant is hearing you. Ah, if we could get to a place where every time God calls, we would just lift a hand, open a mouth, and with a heart of obedience, just say, oh God, I'm here. Whatever you want to say, say it. Whatever you want to do, do it. Whatever you want to minister, minister. I will hear you and I will obey. Is there anybody in here who just has a little inkling of a desire to do what God asks you to do? If you are, say amen. The Bible tells us then that he grows in stature and in favor. This emphasis on Samuel's growth then is seen and it's revealed in the understanding of what the word favor means. Everybody say favor. favor. Here it literally means, it's the Hebrew word tov, T-O-B, pronounced with a V at the end, T-O-B, tov. And it means approval. He had God's approval on his life. I don't like disapproval. I like approval. I like somebody to validate me. I like somebody to vindicate me. I like somebody to say, you know what? I like what you're doing and I'm pleased with it. I like somebody to be able to say, hey, you know what? You're doing a good job. And God's approval was on Samuel. There was a divine factor of approval that rested upon his life and it was evident to everyone and God then raised this young boy up. He raised Samuel up. He made him a person of influence throughout his entire life. So I came to tell you this morning that this particular key, this one, everybody say this one. This one. Say this one. Mm, that this particular key will give you a life of favor. It's one thing to have favor for a moment. It's one thing to have favor for a season. It's one thing to have favor rest on your life for, you know, when you really, really need it. But you know what? This story tells me that God has a way and that God has a desire of exercising favor on your life, all of your life. How many of you want it for more than just a day? Come on, somebody, you want favor from God for more than just an hour, more than just a minute, more than just a week, more than just one good year. Because if I get good, one good year, God, that'd be it. You know, that'd be the bomb.com. No, God says, I got a way of putting favor on your life to last you the rest of your life until I call you home. I've got a way, I've got a plan, I've got a measure of blessing and favor that I can put on you, and it'll rest on you every single day of your life come hell or high water come demons or devils come onslaught and trial and obstacle it doesn't matter if God's favor is on you then nothing but nothing but nothing will be able to stand against the favor of God the favor of God will obliterate every foe of the enemy There is this favor then that rests upon Samuel's life and it rests upon him his entire life. I don't know how many people are older than me this morning. Just don't even look. Amen. But I, I just know that I want to have God's favor on my life until the day I die. I want to go to heaven in favor. I want to show up at the pearly gates wearing a robe called favor on my life. Let him in. He's got favor on him. Oh, glory to God. We heard about you. You had favor on you. I want to get into the streets of gold and walk through gates of pearl and stand with the beloved and the praisers of eternity. And they're going to say, oh, there's that guy that had favor on his life, his whole life. If that's you, you ought to give God a shout because there's a way of getting favor. See, you don't get favor because you declare it. Well, I'm blessed and highly favored. No, you ain't. You broke. Yeah, and you broke down. And you run around, I'm blessed and highly favored. Do not lie. Come on. 
You ain't blessed with favor because you say so. That's not one of the things you can decree and declare. I decree and declare that I am blessed and highly favored. Go ahead. You keep doing that till Jesus comes. See how that work out for you. No, there is a way to have favor. See, with everything that God does, he has a way to do it. God does nothing by accident. God does nothing by coincidence. God nothing, does nothing by happenstance. He does nothing casually. Everything that he does is calculated and it is formulated and it is thought out way in advance. He doesn't have time to think about it. He doesn't have to say, gee, now how am I going to do this? He is the God of all gods. He is the God of total omniscience. He knows everything, has all the power to do what he decides to do, chooses to do. And if he decides to put favor on you, he will put favor on you when you you line up with what the requirements are for receiving it. I can't get any help this morning. You were ready to shout with me. But when I said, when you line up with the uh, requirements to receive it, you all went quiet on me. How many of you know God has a requirement for every single thing that he wants to do in our lives? If you seek me, you'll find me. You can't find God unless you seek God. And so there is this essence and this understanding of how do we find and how do we discover and how do we experience favor for the, all of our lives as Samuel did. There is something here that I, as I looked at this and I said, you know, there, there, has, to be a, a, there, there has to be a key. There has to be a key. You know, there's a key in every word of God. There is a key that unlocks every mystery. There is a key that opens every door that's found in this word. And God wants you to have those keys. Jesus said, I give you the keys. You got to know which one to use. You ever use the wrong key, try to get into your house? I'll never forget it. When I was working in a, a I, was in, I was in Bible school way back in the day. Way back in the day. And I, I, worked, I worked for the city of Santa Cruz in the grounds department. Yeah. And they gave me a, a ring of keys that was about as, you know, I mean, it was about that big. And I would stand, I'd never memorize those keys. And I, I'd go through every single key trying to get into a certain door to open stuff up. God has given you keys and he wants you to use them. And there is something in this word this morning that as I ask God, then what is the key to divine favor on your life forever? God said, read Samuel's story. Because see, if you just read about the sons of Eli, you won't get the wrong perspective if you just look at them. And it seems like Samuel just jumps up out of nowhere. And Samuel continued to grow in stature and favor with the Lord and with men. Well, that's nice. But how and why? God led me to, his, to read his story. See, don't ever, listen, don't ever just read one verse and throw it up against the wall and see if it sticks. Don't ever do that. You've got to read the Bible in context. And God led me to verse 18. But Samuel was ministering before the Lord, a boy wearing a linen ephod. An ephod was a plate, much like the, the priests. It was a breastplate and it had 12 different stones that were different colored representing the 12 tribes of Israel. And, and Samuel had a, a little, little boy's version. It was linen, representing purity. Reminds me of when Pastor Santino was little. And I used to dress him just like me. When he says, we're going to have to show some, some pictures. He, I used to dress him, eggs, I mean, burgundy tie, white shirt, navy blue, double-breasted jacket, gray slacks, gray or burgundy shoes. And he, we'd walk out together, look, you know, you, mini me, you know. Didn't I always dressed him like me. Well, Samuel looked like 
Eli. But he had a different heart. And it says, Samuel was ministering before the Lord, a boy wearing a linen ephod. This young apprentice under Eli's supervision, Samuel, he wore the linen ephod and he faithfully ministered. Everybody say ministered. It doesn't mean he stood up in the temple and read the Torah. It doesn't mean that he pronounced benedictions because he was not of age to do that. The word ministered there is very important because it means he served. He served. He served before the Lord. Some people want to get the blessing without serving. You can't have it. I'm sorry. I can't get no help in here this morning. I said, some people want the blessing without serving. You cannot have it. It comes with a price. The favor of God on your life for the rest of your life comes from your service to God in the house. Oh, it's getting quiet. Y'all getting tight on me in here. I didn't say it belongs to those who serve, you know, in their house or somebody or try and do their own. In the house of God. Where you go to church, where you say, this is my church. This is where I belong. That's where the blessing of God is resting. He ministered before the Lord in the temple. Not at your cousin Susie's birthday party. In the temple. See, people say, well, I, I want the favor of God. Friend, you got to be faithful to get the favor of God for your life on the rest of your life. I'm sorry. I didn't make this up. It's here. It's clear. I didn't quote anything out of context. I didn't recreate a scripture. It is what it says. It says that he was a minister. He was ministering before the Lord, serving before the Lord, a boy wearing a linen ephod. Even as a child, he understood that it was important to serve God in the house of God. So we understand then that the decisive element in Samuel's experiencing the favor of God is found in his service. You need to understand something this morning that Samuel faithfully served God in the temple. As he continually served, he continually grew. As he consistently served, he consistently grew. As he devoted himself to being faithful to the house of God. God devoted himself to exercising favor and approval on the life of Samuel. What's the upshot? What happened with all of that? Well, first of all, you need to understand that Samuel's service evoked and invoked a divine favor on his life. And his priestly position in ministry before God ultimately caused everyone who he ran across to identify him by one title and one phrase. It's one of my favorite expressions in the Bible. It's called the man of God. It doesn't mean he was perfect. It doesn't mean that he didn't miss the mark. It didn't, doesn't mean that he didn't mess up every once in a while. What it means is, is that his heart was so devoted to God and to the house of God and to the things of God that there was an anointing that rested upon his life so that when people saw him, they said, that's the man of God. For me, there is no greater title to have next to my name I just want to be the man of God I hope this morning there's somebody in here who says I, I want to be a man of God I want to be a woman of God well just let me tell you this that serving is a prelude to prominence and serving is the foundation of favor Samuel, as he grows in the favor of God, 
has a spiritual vision. And he has a keen ability to perceive the voice of God that was directly connected to his will to serve God. You see, if you want to hear God's voice, he'll speak to you. But he's not going to speak to you if you won't listen. And he won't speak to you unless he knows you're going to do what he tells you to do. God will never use his, his, his words and his breath without purpose. I feel the presence of God in this room right now in a very unusual way. prophet said that he'll take the stony heart out and give us a heart of flesh a tender heart a soft heart a heart that can be molded a heart that can be conformed a heart that can beat with the same beat of the spirit of almighty God God's doing that right now in certain people I see it by the Holy Ghost God is saying, I, I want you to have a keen vision. I want you to have a keen ability to perceive my voice and be able to walk in my will to serve me. And as Samuel grew, and as he continued to devote himself to the house of God and the things of God, the Bible tells us that his word, that God's word in his mouth was made efficacious what does that mean it means it was effectual it had power and the bible says that not one watch this not one of his words fell to the ground everything he spoke came to pass every prophetic declaration was fulfilled every promise that god exercised through his vocal cords according to his will and his purpose for people was realized and god used him because he was faithful God use me he's looking for faithfulness this morning he's looking for faithful service your faithfulness will bring the favor of God on your life for the rest of your life. As long as you're faithful to God, He'll exercise favor. I see the hand of God reaching into people's spirit. I see the hand of God reaching into people's inner being. I feel I, the hand and the presence of God that is moving even right now and tweaking things in you and saying, I want to conform you to my will and to my purpose and walk you, cause you to walk in my purposes and my will, my word for your life. Come on now, come, come, let me do it. Don't resist me. Don't fight me. I'm, I'm trying to get you to a place where I can exercise. I want to give Give you favor. God gave him such favor. That all of Israel from kings to commoners recognize the establishment of a new prophetic ministry and God's revelation to and through Samuel became a regular occurrence in Israel 
It was no longer hit and miss. It was no longer, we haven't had a word for a long time. No, now through Samuel, there would be an effectual, continual word that came out of his mouth that changed climates and changed atmospheres and disturbed the chaos and brought things into order. God has a way of giving you the ability to speak order where there is chaos, to speak peace where there's panic, to speak into troubled situations and cause things to be set in motion and set right and set correctly according to the authority that God has given you but my brother and my sister it comes with faithful service because it's part of God's favor on your life Samuel is seen as a prophetic light that overshadowed the priestly darkness And he performed his work as a sacred charge from God. And he honored God in his heart. And he served him with his life. About 1,200 years after this takes place, Stephen, the first martyr, stands before the Sanhedrin for preaching the Word of God and being faithful. And they're going to kill him. But in his message, in his swan song, in his last utterance, he talks about the whole history of Israel and he comes to David in Acts chapter 7 and Stephen says, and David enjoyed God's favor and asked that he might provide a dwelling place for the God of Jacob. The reason why David enjoyed God's favor is because he made God's house his priority. Where's your priority this morning? What are, you con con what are you devoted to? How does your con consecration reveal itself? It's clear to me that the reason why Samuel had the favor of God on his life for the rest of his life. And read his story, you'll find out that he did until the very day he died, was because he was devoted to the serving of God's purposes in God's house. I'm sorry, you can't get favor because you want it or because you'd say it. You get favor all of your life because there's something that you do. You devote yourself to the things of God. I know I've heard preachers say, you know, favor ain't fair. No, favor is fair. Favor is fair. God just doesn't go, ooh, favor. You don't get it, you get it. Arbitrarily, capriciously, no. God says, there's a servant. That lady's a servant. My daughter's a servant. My son serves. That brother, that sister, that family, they serve. They minister before the Lord in the house of the Lord. And so because they do it as unto me, I will give them favor. Every head bowed and every eye closed in this room this morning. I've seen the hand of God touch people already. I've heard the rustling of the Spirit rush through this place and light and land on certain people. I've seen the finger of God pierce into the depth of a heart to conform that heart to his purposes. 
I've heard the Spirit of God talk to people throughout this message. And what needs to happen then this morning is we just need to say, like Samuel, yes, Lord, speak. Your servant hears you. Speak. Your servant's ready. Speak. Your servant will. Speak. Your servant will serve. Your servant will minister. Your servant, I am your servant. I will serve you. I will be faithful to your house. I will be faithful to your word. I will be faithful to the things that you have ordained and orchestrated for my life. God, realign my priorities. God, set my values in place. Make your place my priority. And the promise of favor will rest on me. If you can pray that prayer with any sense of sincerity, And I want you to stand to your feet right where you are and just say, today's my day. God, conform my heart. God, bring me to a place. I, I, I devote myself to hearing your word. I devote myself to following your will. I devote myself to what it is you have established for my life. God, I understand that this is first. This place is first. This house is first. Your will, your word, your work, your way is first. It, it must supersede everything else in my life. God said, you do it. And I will pour out so much favor on you. People will look at you and say, my God, how in the world did you end up where you are? Doors will open that were impossible. Opportunities will arise that could have never arisen any other way. People will bless you even though they don't want to. You'll have influence wherever you go. You speak a thing, it'll come to pass. Your words will be efficacious. They will not fall to the ground. But it starts here. In this place. This house. This is where it starts, friends. This is where it starts, my brother. This is where it starts, my sister. Not in some other church, not in some other venue, not in some other convention, not in some other conference. It starts here. Now I tell you by the authority of the word of God Almighty that God will lavishly, graciously, abundantly, overwhelmingly pour out favor on your life if you will serve him in his house with all of your life if that's you say yes and amen pastor that's me I'm going to do it by the spirit of God almighty now lift your hands God I thank you for your word I thank you for your presence. I thank you for your power. I thank you for your purpose being exercised in the lives of your people even now. And God, I expect as the pastor of this church, I, I expect as your servant to see a change in people's lives. I expect to see a change in their giving. I expect to see a change in their attendance. I expect to see a change in their devotion, in their desire, in their commitment to serve you here. Because I preached your word. And your spirit is doing the work. And I give you the praise for it now. And I speak favor over your people this morning. But for each one and only each one who will listen and do what you said. And so for those who will say yes to God this morning. I speak favor over you. In the name of Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God.
for I am wise in all that I do, says God. And I know who to bless. I know the heart. I see the sincerity. I see what others do not see. And so for you today who have made a decision to be faithful to me, to my house, and to my work, and to my way, and to my will, I now release divine favor and approval on you by my spirit, saith the Lord your God. Come on and praise him one time.